How's everybody doing? This is the second installment to the series I'm calling The Backstory. Um, so firstly, I'm Aaron Goodis. I'm a freelance fly fishing and landscape photographer here in Vancouver, British Columbia. So in this, this particular image, um, it's Philip Goodis, my dad, um, on the Chilliwack River. Um, it's, a, it's an image that has been used many times in magazines, uh, Fly Fusion, BC Outdoors, and uh, it was shot in 2013 in January. Um, I started shooting a lot of photos, uh, landscape photos, and then um, putting an angler in the, in the photos was something I was really into. Um, so this is a pretty good example of um, a landscape image that probably would be quite good on its own, but having an angler in there um, just provides a bit of depth and scale. Um, so it's the Chilliwack River. Um, it was in January. It was very frosty. The day was really cold. I remember like we drove out from Harrison. Um, we wanted to get there super early uh, so that the frost would still be there. Um, you know, it starts to warm up and usually by sort of like later morning, um, all the frost will, will go away and then it just has a different type of feeling to it. So we got up really early. Um, and I knew this spot, I, I had scouted this spot before, it's up on the Chilliwack River, just above the, the prison camp area. For a lot of, a lot of you who have fished up there, well, you, you'll definitely uh, recognize this spot. Um, it's very different now. Um, so at that time, um, as you can see, it's just a beautiful, like, bend in the river with a bit of an S-turn. S um, and you can see the foreground is full of that beautiful like rocky outcropping and the, the wood and it's all frosty and it's just super cold. Um, and I couldn't, I mean, it was just perfect. I was just like, oh man, this is gonna be an incredible morning. Um, so we drove all the way in there from Harrison, which is, you know, cuts the drive in half. Uh, drove all the way up, it was pretty icy on the road, parked, um, we're ready, ready to go, waiters on already. Now um, I have my camera set up. Uh, my dad had a spay rod and he's wearing some some old Sims waders and I'd asked him to you know put something a little bit brighter on the top. Uh, I think he had maybe a Patagonia you know sort of like a wind wind uh, block sort of fleece type type jacket or whatever it doesn't matter. Um, and yeah he was able to get down there and stand on that rock although quite carefully because it was really really icy. Um, and I proceeded to shoot and so at that time, I was doing a lot of long exposure landscape work, and I thought by putting an angler in the shot um, and still having that longer exposure um, would be a little bit more unique. And at that time, not many people were, were shooting like that. Um, yeah, so I, I composed the shot uh, and so, you know, got the, got the tripod set up. I was using my camera with a wide angle lens. Um, and I was using some filters and I'll talk about that stuff uh, in a little bit here. Um, yeah, and I basically had my dad go down into that, you know, corner, that right corner, um, sort of just off center of the frame and fill the frame. And it was a beautiful blue sky day, super cold and crisp and just awesome. Um, so I ended up taking photos. Now, the funny part is, is that, I mean, these photos were averaging um, around a second long, maybe even two th seconds, three seconds, depending on the aperture that I used. And so of course it was really cold. And of course, when you're standing there and you're trying to not move, it can be quite hard. So a lot of my shots were beautiful because I had the tripod and so everything else, you have that slow exposure, everything else is solid. Um, but of course my dad, you know, being the, the champion that he is, was trying his hardest to stand still and not move. And even for one second or two seconds, it's surprisingly quite hard to do that, especially when you're cold and you're shaky and it's like it's early morning and, you know, it's slippery and all that. So he was doing the best he could. And so after, I think probably, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 tries, um, everybody's getting quite cold. I thought I'd probably got the shot already, but I was just like wanting to be sure. You know, I'm zooming in on the back of the camera because it's digital and just to make sure he's sharp because honestly, if he, if he's not sharp, then the image doesn't work. It doesn't matter. He has to be focused and not moving and still, and that makes the image work, right? Um, so after like quite a lot of tries, we definitely had some, some shots and we were very cold. 
and uh, it was time to like get back in the car, warm up, have some coffee and, and, uh, and just look at the back of the camera again and make sure that I got it. Um, and I did, and it was just a beautiful shot. And it's just, it's turned out to be one of my, you know, top images that just stands the test of time. It's just a beautiful landscape with an angler. Um, he was, you know, basically rigging up his, his, put it, uh, his spare rod and putting a fly on. It was steelhead season and in January and cold, and it was just awesome. Um, so that's kind of like the backstory. There wasn't like a big hike involved. It's an easy spot to get to, but a lot of it was just trying to get out there really early in the morning with that, with those conditions, that frosty conditions. And, and that's what makes the, the image good. And of course the composition works really well. Um, and my dad was just, uh, like I said, he's a champion. He was able to stand still for multiple attempts until we got the shot and it just turned out really good. There's a few things that I probably would do differently now. So at that time, um, I was shooting with a uh, Nikon uh, D300S, which was my workhorse camera at the time. You'll notice that I end up talking about this camera a lot. Um, and I shot with a wide angle lens. And at the time I was using um, this lens here, it's a 10 to 24 millimeter. So it's at 10, it's very wide. Um, so you get like a, a, just a really nice wide uh, field of view. Um, and I used a uh, polarizer. So that's why you can see that the, the blues are a little bit more um, deep and rich. The colors are quite rich. Um, so a polarizer typically uh, just um, gives you more rich color, uh, taken, takes the glare out of the, the image um, and just naturally saturates the color. So that's, that's usually why I use a polarizer. Um, in this case, I also used um, a neutral or a graduated neutral density filter in front of the lens. So it looks like this. And I think at that time, I just figured that I wanted um, the foreground and him to be nice and bright, but I also didn't want um, to blow out that background, so the mountain background. And so if you have um, an older camera, which doesn't have the same dynamic range, a lot of times you can't get uh, the photo in a, in a single exposure if you have a dark foreground and a bright background. So you use, at that time, you use um, a neutral density graduated filter held in front of the lens that darkens the background or the top part of the frame that allows you to have a longer exposure or a brighter exposure on the lower half of the frame. Um, the downside to it, as you can see with this photo, is that um, this area, because that's in shadow and that's the bright stuff, this, fil this filter goes directly over the half, the middle. And so anything that's darker on the edges are darker. And so it creates a bit of like a vignette. Um, and unfortunately, um, that doesn't really work that well, but it, the image itself still, I think it's still good. Um, at that time, I didn't know any differently. I could have probably used two different exposures and blended them together. So that one for the background, one for the foreground and then merged them. And then that way there wouldn't have been the need for a filter like this. Um, but I wanted to do it in one single shot. So I did that with the filter and, you know, I guess with the modern cameras, the cameras that I have now that are still pretty old, but they're just newer, um, and they're full frame. Um, they have a lot of dynamic range and I probably could have, uh, just pulled down the highlights on the top and opened the shadows on the bottom half of the image and just got it in one shot without the need for a filter like this one. Um, but I did use this filter um, at that time I needed it and it worked out pretty well. Um, so that's, that's how that worked out. Um, and the actual uh, settings I used was I would always use ISO 100 because that's a very clean image and it gives you a longer exposure that way. I shot at F16, so a very small aperture, um, which didn't allow very much light. Um, of course it was on a tripod and I shot it at one second. I used a remote release so I didn't shake the camera um, when, I, when I pressed the shutter. Um, so that's another trick. Um, 
and it was at 11 millimeters, so quite wide. And when I have a polarizing filter and of course the neutral density filter, graduated one, in front of the lens, um, the polarizer would show up a little bit on the corners at 10 millimeters. So I'd always just bring the lens in to about 11 so I wouldn't see it. Um, so I shot it at 11 millimeters, so nice and wide. Um, and those are the settings and they worked out pretty well, I think. Um, so that's basically it. So that, I just, I mean, I don't really have a name for this image. It was just uh, the upper Chilliwack. It's one of the only shots that I've, I've taken that was like that. Um, just a very beautiful um, exposure and a really beautiful scene. And it's changed a lot since then. So yeah, I hope you, uh, I mean, I'll show you the, the image and I hope you enjoy um, these um, little background, sort of backstory info sessions on a particular image. And I will uh, see you in the next one. See ya.